स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so let us now so i end the discussion on broken extremals and let, let us now look at another formulation a very very vital formulation of uh, a reformulation of euler lagrange namely namely the hamiltonian formulation hamiltonian formulation okay so what have we got uh, we have seen hamiltonian earlier so seen earlier where have we seen we have seen in several places for example in beltrami identity right so it's not completely new to us we have also seen when we were describing variable end point conditions and of course when we were using in broken extremals so h appears in lot of places right it seems that this this quantity is useful right but we haven't explored the full power of the hamiltonian formulation right so so this is an alternative it is an alternative uh, alternative approach it is an alternative approach approach to my euler lagrange equation it is an alternative approach to my euler lagrange equation uh, we will see that so the variable h and why is it that we have to consider alternative approach because sometimes using the hamiltonian approach will reduce the problem significantly or significantly simplify the problem and further the hamiltonian approach is coordinate free right we will see all these issues so using uh, so so and uh, so so that those are my those are my advantages of hamiltonian formulation uh, there is another issue we will see later on that given given one hamiltonian system given one hamiltonian system we can we can uh, construct another one another one can be constructed another one can be constructed uh, by a special by a special transformation by a special transformation known as the symplectic map symplectic map okay so which means that suppose the hamiltonian formulation is quite complicated in one coordinate system we can go to another coordinate system via the symplectic map to go towards a much more simpler hamiltonian formulation right so that is also one of the advantages of using hamiltonian we can shift from one coordinate to the other and also uh, we will see later on the search the search for uh, such a symplectic map such a map when i say map i'm i'm talking about these maps symplectic maps will lead to a, a first order pde leads to the first order pde well known as the hamilton jacobi equation right or later on as i will say that this is the well known hj equation so i'm going to talk about all these issues namely the symplectic map hamilton jacobi and so on uh, step by step but before that let me start by introducing what is a point transformation okay so what is a point transformation so let us build the theory uh, step by step point transformation so a point transformation is a map it's a map connecting connecting pair of points pair of points let's say small x y to another pair pair of points to another pair let's say capital x y right so point transformation is a map from one point to the other right Uh, alternatively we could also have a contact transformation so point transformation is quite easy to understand 
On the other hand, we have the so called con contact transformation, which is a function defining the transformation, which depends on the derivative of the dependent variable. So, I have said lot of things, let me describe in detail. So, my contact transformation are functions, are functions defining defining the transformation, transformation, defining the transformation de which depend, which depend on the derivative, which depend on the derivative, on the derivative of the dependent variable, derivative of the dependent variable. Okay. We will see one such very important contract contact transformation known as the Legendre transformation and we will use that transformation. So, an example of contact transformation is the so called Legendre transformation. We will see all these quantities, uh, all these definitions immediately. So, my Legendre transform is a contact transform, I denote this as L dot T, right. And we will see that the Legendre transformation provides a link between my Euler Lagrange formulation and the Hamiltonian formulation, right. This is the link that we are after. Once we have found the solution in one uh, form that is the Hamiltonian form, we have to change back into Euler Lagrange form, that is via the Legendre transform. So, let us uh, let us consider. Uh, so, to see what are Legendre transform, let us consider a function. So, consider a one variable, a one variable uh, Legendre transform of y from x 0 to x 1 to r. Uh, let us say this is a smooth function by a new variable, a new variable, a when variable Legendre transform by a new variable p such that p is equal to y prime of x. So, this is the definition of the new variable uh, p is equal to y prime x, right. Note that this is a contact transformation because we have defined a function which depends on the derivative of the dependent variable. Here the dependent variable is y and we have defined the function as a derivative of the dependent variable, right. So, so, so one, one can potentially be inverted, we can essentially find x as a function of p, provided the second derivative of y exists and it is non-zero. So, one, one can be inverted, one can be inverted to find x as a function of p right provided provided the second derivative of y with respect to x is non zero and that is via standard inversion argument uh, so we can assume without loss of generality that the derivative is positive doesn't matter right okay uh, because in this case we are assuming that the shape of the profile is strictly convex upward or we are assuming a convex shape okay, of the function. Okay. So, so, what is p? p is the derivative of the dependent variable or uh, geometrically it is the slope of the curve. So, p is p corresponds corresponds to the slope it corresponds to the slope of the tangent line, it corresponds to the slope of the tangent line, right. Okay. So, then let us also introduce another new function namely h. So, we introduce, we introduce another new function or the Hamiltonian. So, introduce the Hamiltonian h is equal to minus y plus p times x. I call this definition as my 2, right. Now, it turns out my 1 and 2 are of course, Legendre transforms by definition, right. These are contact transformations and further 
they one and two is an involution. What is an involution? An involution is a transformation which is its own inverse, right? Or a transformation. We will see how it is. It is a transformation which is its own inverse, right? So let us see how. So note that. Uh, so so we can check how it is an involution. Let us see. So note that del h del p by definition of h. So note that uh, my my x is a function of p. So it is p which is the independent variable now in this new variable system p comma h, right? So my del h del p is by definition of h is negative del y del p plus x plus uh, x well p del x del p right so then this is also equal to minus del y del x times del x del p plus p times del x del p plus x or i can club this together i see that this is also equal to uh, del x del p times y prime plus p plus x by the definition of p p is equal to y prime and i get that this is equal to 0 or this is equal to x right so what i see is that what i have found is that x is equal to h prime p this relation is very similar very similar to p is equal to y prime x right so in terms of the new variable x is equal to h prime p also notice notice that minus h of this time h the hamiltonian plus uh, plus x times p becomes becomes by the definition of h it becomes this is equal to y right and this relation is very similar to saying that h is equal to uh, so or yes so h is equal to minus y plus p x right so hence we can see that we can see that this setup is an involution right okay so let us look at a quick example the example that i have to see how this legendary transformation work so let my function y be equal to x to the power 4 by 4 so then we see that my p which is y prime of x is x cube and or from here i get that x is equal to p to the power one third right so so my h which is equal to minus y plus p x is going to be so minus y is x to the power four so minus x to the power four by four plus p p is x cube uh, x cube uh, times x which is also equal to 3 by 4 x to the power 4 or this is 3 by 4 uh, 3 by 4 uh, p to the power 4 by 3 by this definition right ok so 3 by 4 p to the power 4 by 3 from this definition ok so then uh, let us see uh, what happens to del h del p so del h del p so so h is completely in terms of p so del h del p is 3 by 4 uh, times 4 by 3 times p to the power 1 by 3 which is p to the power 1 by 3 which is also equal to x right and and minus h plus x p gives me minus 3 by 4 p to the power 4 by 3 plus x so x is p to the power 1 by 3 times p so p to the power 4 by 3 i get that this is p to the power 4 by 3 times uh, 1 by 4 right or this is also equal to this is also equal to uh, x to the power 4 by 4 by definition of x this is also equal to y 
So, I see that this definition is an is giving me an involution right. So, now let me wrap up this lecture by giving the Legendre transformation with respect to the integrand of the functional. So, let us now consider a more general function. Let us consider f of x comma y comma y prime which is nothing but the integrand in our uh, functional with uh, in the Euler Lagrange formulation right. So, let f be a general function where x, y and y prime are 3 independent are considered 3 independent variables considered 3 independent independent variables right and we define we define uh, new variables that is p and h we define new variables my variables p are defined by del f del y prime and my h is now defined to be minus f plus y prime p note that the role of y is replaced by the role of f and the role of x is replaced by y prime ok and here in this relation x and y uh, x and y plays passive role right they are all implicitly hidden in this definition of the new variable ok and also this quantity is valid provided provided my second derivative of f with respect to y prime square is not 0 provided this is not 0. Uh, let me quickly look at an example in this category. So, suppose I have that f is the standard arc length integrand of the arc length functional right. So, then then my my p is del f del y prime which is also equal to y prime by 1 plus y prime square under the root or from here I can find that y prime is p divided by square root 1 minus p square right and my Hamiltonian h of x y p is going to be minus f which is 1 plus y prime square plus y prime p right. We can replace y prime here and here to get that the solution comes out to be uh, after replacement 1 minus p square under the root right. So, this is my how I approach normally when we have to perform the Legendre transformation. Finally, I wrap up uh, my discussion by noting that uh, note for the passive variables x and y the following relation holds right. So, for the passive variables we have the following relation which holds note that since my h is minus f plus y prime p right I have that del h del x is equal to the derivative of f with respect to x with a minus because only f contains x right and similarly the partial derivative of h with respect to y is also minus del f del y. So, I have found all the necessary derivative in the Cartesian frame or in the Euler Lagrange frame to the necessary derivative in the uh, p h frame or the new frame ok. So, that wraps up my discussion in this lecture and in the next lecture I am going to continue our topic of Hamiltonian formulation namely how to derive the, the famous Hamilton Jacobi equation and how is it useful to solve and give us the extremal in another formulation. Thank you for listening.